Hello people and welcome to Crypto Exposed. Okay guys, we have a post here from Charles Adkins, the uh, president of the governing council. And uh, yeah, I, I found this really, really a great read. So I thought I'd share it with you. And this is basically off of the back of the whole uh, HBAR Foundation controversy. So the first thing that I will say is like, kudos to addressing it head on because they really have they really have taken on board what the feedback has been like because i'll be honest with you it's been a while i didn't know if it was just going to be one of those things that they just let fly under the radar and then they just never really address it that kind of thing but no they've come back um charles has really you know been completely in my opinion sincere in his response he's actually really been opening some of the things that he said so i've got some key points from this because it is quite long i would actually recommend it obviously if you are a hbar holder to, to actually read the full thing to be honest with you because um it is a very good read and you can get an honest view of where they're at and you can just get like the the full breakdown but I've got some bullet points here that I'll go through. So he starts having, he says, you know, Hedera is decentralized, but they are taking steps to, you know, further decentralize the network. So, you know, he says anyone who knows what decentralization means know that Hedera is decentralized, but they are trying to, you know, further the decentralization of the network, which I completely agree with. You know, I covered a video uh, not long ago where there was someone saying that HBAR centralized and, you know, I've already covered why that's just nonsense, but You've got it here, you know, coming from Charles, and I absolutely agree with this. And this is where, like, as he explains it, you kind of start to see, hey, this is one of, like, kind of like the, the, the pitfalls of decentralization, right? When he starts to explain um, in regards to the whole HBAR Foundation controversy. So, you know, he's basically saying, look, like, I've been trying to do as much investigation as I can. But he says, look, the HBAR Foundation and the Hashgraph Association, like, they're, they're separate entities, to Hedera. So when he's wanting to, you know, look into this and stuff, there's only so far you can go because it's not Hedera. They're, they're separate entities. So they are part of the Hedera ecosystem, but they're not a part of Hedera. And so he can't control what these companies do. That's really up to them. And that's where you see this is decentralization. Like, and this is where you see like a pitfall of it right now look i'm not saying that to say that you know decentralization is bad and we should be going for centralization then no not at all but this is where it's like you've got to understand some of the pros and cons of this right like people keep saying decentralization decentralization but you've then got to understand that hey like there are certain points where decentralization might not always go in your favor there might be some points where decentralization can be a bit of an issue right and so, yeah, he's basically saying, like, there's only so much investigation you can do due to the fact that, you know, these are separate entities. But he's saying that, look, I'm speaking with them. I'm speaking with the Hashgraph Association. I'm speaking with the HBAR Foundation and I'm having conversations and I'm letting them know what I think is, you know, what I think is fair and what I think is unfair and what we would deem a fair compensation package for an employee and what we think is excessive and stuff like that so he's basically trying to speak with them now obviously it's up to them what they do with this they don't have to listen to him but he's at least trying on his end and that's all you can ask for right that's all you can ask for so to me i really i think at the end of the day you can't ask for no more than that you can't ask for no more than him to try and then that's what he's doing so Again, I give him respect there. And he said something here that I was actually surprised that he was, you know, so open to say, but this is why I say this seems very sincere. And um, he said, look, um, Hedera hasn't gained the traction that they would have hoped to have got at this point. And I was quite surprised when I heard that. And it made me think one of two things. When they say it's not got the traction they would have hoped, is it because, because, you know, when I've done these videos, like they've, they seem to be doing pretty well to me when I look at all the, you know, development activity and stuff that's going on. So is it a thing that they just thought it was going to be even more successful or is Hedera just not as successful as we would think it is, right? Maybe there is still a bit more work to be done. I'm not sure. Maybe they thought, you know, Hedera at this point would be like, for example, like a top 10 crypto. So maybe there was a lot more ambitious or maybe it's just like, no, like, yeah, we have had some successes here and there, but we, we you know, it's not going as well as we would have thought. I, I don't know the answer to that. So um, I'm not really sure, but 
again, I thought that was really honest of him to say. So I definitely respected him saying that. And this is when I could tell that this was going to be a really honest um, article, right? Because he's not just trying to, you know, blow Hadira's trumpet and say how great Hadira is or anything like that. He's, he's being really open here. And so um, he's now basically saying, look, like we're putting some steps in place to try and gain the, the trust back from the Hadira community. So what are they doing? Um, first and foremost, uh, more transparency, which obviously, you know, this is a great start with this article, uh, this this message. This is what we need. We need just transparency so we know where we stand and, and we can see where they're going and what they're doing. Because, again, trust has been eroded due to the HBAR Foundation, right? Which, again, when you look at it from the decentralization aspect, is a shame because Hadira has basically been pretty much unfairly impacted from another company's actions so it's a bit unfair that that's happened but it is what it is like it is what it is so yeah more transparency they want to like basically give us more regular updates and stuff like what's going on like let us know the general workings with behind Hadira and he did say this like he said you know I, there's only so much information I can give because there's like confidentiality agreements and they don't want to like spark any type of like market manipulation and stuff like that. So he's saying like within reason with this stuff. So he's not going to tell you absolutely everything that's going on, but they are going to try and give more information. So people are more in the loop on what's going on. Um, then he said the excessive compensation concern. So again, as I was just saying, like he's having conversations with like the HBAR Foundation, with the Hashgraph Association uh, to basically find out like, look, like what are you paying your employees? What What's the packages that you guys are doing for them? And then he's letting them know like, okay, here at Hadira, this is the kind of stuff that we're doing and this is what we think is fair. So hopefully that they will align and obviously will be more aligned in terms of what they think is fair and not, you know, being excessive with these packages. And if you remember guys, when I covered this, that's what I said at the beginning, right? I said it was excessive. That that was my exact wording. So the fact that that's what they've used as well, you know, again, it just lets me know that what I was saying was was correct. Um, but yeah, um, it, it, it was just excessive. You know, it was just so excessive um, for that to be on top of the original salary. But yeah, he's also said that they've put like, that they've put this thing in where they have basically spoke to like a third party company and they are basically going to track employees wallets now. And so if there's like suspicious activity, it will alert the, the big heads at Hadera so then they can turn around and go to the employees and say, hey, you know, like we've detected some suspicious activity. You know, we, we might need to have a word with you. So this is probably going to help in terms of the market manipulation aspect. So a quick example of that is let's just say Hadera knows something as big is coming. And then someone in the staff like tries to leak the information out and they've already got the money there on the exchange waiting for the pump to come out off the back of the news. And then they just sell straight away. So it's that kind of thing to try and detail any type of market manipulation, which I, again, I, I think that's good. Um, obviously, you know, like not every employee is going to be like that, but at least you've got things in place, right? Like it's something, it, you know, at least they're trying to do things that they can within their control. So I think that's a good start in terms of, you know, trying to, um, you know, trying to tackle that, that, that issue and also having a conversation, you know, as I say, it's decentralized. So these are their own companies. So whether they're going to listen, we don't know, but at least they're trying to see if they can get them to be on the same page. Um, the next thing was community engagement. Um, so again, speaking more with the community, this is like developers and stuff like that. So letting them know, you know, okay, this is the kind of things that we're doing. These are the kind of things that, you know, developers and stuff can get involved with, that kind of stuff. Uh, this is the kind of things that you can do to help us and that kind of thing. So I, I think that's good as well because developers are what help build the network, right? The developers are the ones who are, you know, you know that they're basically building up the value of HBAR, right? Because they're creating use cases for HBAR. So yes, you definitely want the developers involved. You definitely want to like keep them in the loop and make it so it's something that they, you know, want to continue to build on. Because you know when you have these kind of things, this can be the kind of stuff that not only takes away the the investors but also the developers. And if you're losing developers, well, you know, you're losing potential use cases or you're losing value to another network because it could just go and develop on another network. And I always say this, like it only takes one great idea that could potentially just rocket HBAR up even faster than, you know, what we're currently seeing. Because, you know, like let's just say somebody makes this this really great use case and it really does come out and just takes off. Well, that's going to be all the value going to that network, right? So 
if that uh, developer was to leave and say, I'm just going to go develop somewhere else and then it takes off on another network, that's value that could have been going to HBAR. So yeah, again, I, I really like that. Um, accountability measures. So again, they, they want to try and do as much as they can to like, you know, like own up to their flaws and own up to what they, you know, their, their mistakes, which again, what, what more can you ask for? Like even this article that they've done here, this post, like they're, they're being really open and trying to address these issues. So I have to give them their props in that regard because they're making an honest effort, right? They're not just kind of like, you know, like, yeah, we just weren't really our fault and just passing the book like that they're taking this on full head on and taking the full responsibility so um yeah i I really like the fact that they're doing that i think that's something that's going to really help them in terms of like building the trust back up um strong vision and leadership so this is where charles is saying you know as the president he's gonna do his best to be the face of hadira and do as much as he can to help hadira build up again the the trust within the uh within the community he wants to try and basically be more visible he wants people to see him um, as the person who's really trying to get Hadira to be one of the the top networks out there and for Hadira to be um, like a household name within the crypto space so again it's great that that's his drive like he's committed to trying to do that then we've got revitalized marketing strategy which is basically you know I've heard people say this that everybody looks at this um, in terms of Hedera, it's like a project that's just for the enterprise. It's not for like retail, etc. And like they're, they're not really back in retail. And he's saying, look, we, we're going to change that. We want it to be not just uh, enterprise focused. Like, yes, we are trying to be like enterprise um, focused, but they're not trying to alienate retail, right? Like they, they want to have uh, both, right? They want to obviously work with enterprises, but they also want to have retail there by their side. So um they're basically saying that they're going to start trying to you know market in a way that's not just for enterprises um but also for retail as well to make them more retail friendly um i I agree i think that's the right way to go i said this in my video when i was addressing the whole controversy that they do need retail in my opinion I, i think you know especially right now because you know like hedera isn't like successful enough to stand on its own yet so if they really did lose you know retail as a whole in a, in a dramatic way like h bar is going to suffer so i have said this before like I, I don't think they can afford to lose retail at this point that they're, they're really not successful enough yet at that point so it's good to see that they're kind of acknowledging that and they're trying to you know bring retail back into their uh, into their focus as well and uh lastly improve communication so this is just where charles is saying again like just letting us all know what's going on keeping us all in the loop uh charles has also now said that he's going to release a uh, a weekly blog um about what's going on at hadira again he said within reason like he's, he can't tell you everything because of agreements in place confidentiality all that kind of stuff but he's going to try and tell us as much of what's going on as possible so yeah uh, overall i thought this was a really great post i think i really respect them for doing this i think it was very open it was very honest and i, I really do think it was sincere this didn't seem to me it's just like a uh, let's just get this over and done with it really did seem to me like this is someone who really does want to try and turn this around and, and build the community back up so i really respect it i'm, I'm glad they've done it and let, let's see what they do like you know they've said all this now so let's hold them to account let's see how things go from here hopefully they can do it they seem like they genuinely want to so i would think that they'll be good i think that they will stay true to this so we'll see how things go but um definitely an interesting post and as i say i do recommend you guys read it in full just to get the full breakdown um but that's the highlight of it but what do you guys think hadira addressing the community let me know your thoughts guys i'd be interested to hear thank you very much for watching this if you did like it please remember to drop a comment like and subscribe but until next time take care